And also, I've lost my yurt. Hi, so I'm in a yurt. I am staying here for the night. I went on a little tour of some sites around Ulaanbaatar uh, today, so yesterday then, today, and I came to the Terej National Park, I think it's called, and I'm, yeah, I'm in a yurt, um, and yeah, that's basically all I have to say, but I will show you what it's like in the yurt, because it's quite cool, it's very different, it's very Mongolian, so that's what this video is going to be about, probably won't be very long, but that's fine, we'll get some content out, and you can see what yurt life is like. So I got here like an hour ago and I've just kind of been resting. I've just been giving myself a bit of like deep chill time. And now I'm just about to put my dinner on. So when you stay in a yurt, <laughs> you can often eat what the family eat who live in the other yurts, um, give them some money and they'll cook you food. However, if you're vegan, or even vegetarian, you're out of luck. So if that's the case, um, what I have done is I spoke to the guy at the hostel who organized this for me, and basically he was like, we'll just buy your own food, and then they'll give you a stove to cook it on. And then you cook your food, and then he's told them that I am vegan. So uh, that's is what I'm doing now. I've just put my water on, just maybe boiling and I'm gonna have some pasta. So I left my tripod on a sleeper bus in Vietnam so my selfie stick is now doubling up as a tripod and it's actually it's it's taking to the job very well it's enjoying this uh, um, promotion but obviously it's not a tripod. Anyway I'm cooking some pasta, got my pasta, putting it in in the boiling water. I don't know how much to put in. How hungry am I? Oh that is a lot of pasta. Okay I have a lot of pasta. Anyone want to come around? This is when I drop my phone in the pot of boiling water. Okay, so, pasta. I have somewhere. So I went to the uh, supermarket yesterday and I bought all of the stuff that I need. So I also have a, some arrabbiata sauce and I have <laughs> um, a jar of pickled onions, which I've half eaten and I'm gonna put in my pasta and a jar of olives, which I have about two thirds eaten and I'm gonna put in my pasta. So that's Dirk Claire's dinner. I'm quite excited about it, it sounds pretty good. And yeah, that's about it at the moment. I'm gonna eat and I'll tidy up a bit and then I'll do a yurt tour, cause it doesn't get dark till really late. So I'll do a yurt tour, I'll do a tour of outside and we'll go from there, shall we? All right, I'll uh, show you my dinner when it's done. Wherever I go in the world, I just eat olives, like literally. I've just got this pot of olives and I've just been eating them for the last like hour. I mean, doesn't that just look fab? I have enough to feed an army and I have this bowl to put it in. So there's going to be a few servings, but... So I'm I have eaten my dinner. I've just bought some water for a cup of tea and I put the cup of tea on. The water's just cooling down for that now. I don't know why my voice went so high pitched then. Um, I didn't eat all the pasta. I put some of the pasta in the leftover jars. Um, so hopefully that'll keep for tomorrow. So I got here and I don't know, it was weird like when I first got here. So I'm obviously like here on my own, like I'm, you know, doing most things on my own. And oh, so like I'm traveling on my own. Yeah. But I meet quite a lot of people. Like I meet people all over the place. I was just in a hostel in Ulaanbaatar and was chatting to a woman there and she was there the two days I was there. And um, we were in the same dorm room, so like been chatting to her. I met people in Beijing. Did I meet people in Shanghai? Yeah, I met people in Shanghai. <laughs> Went to a comedy night with some new friends from Shanghai. So like I meet people all the time. But I also like, I'm doing this on my own, well, for many reasons. But one of the reasons is I do like my own time. There's a dog there. I think he's heard that I was cooking pasta. Anyway, yeah, so I'm like fine on my own, like... I I, you know, you go on a trip on your own, you expect to spend some time alone. And I like my own time. I like spending time on my own. But I don't know. I got here and I was like, what do I do? And I was, I, I think, and I honestly, like, I hate the fact that I'm saying this, but I think it was because there's no Wi-Fi and I don't have any internet. And I was like, but what do I do? Like, I don't know. I guess I've got used to the comfort of just like connecting to Wi-Fi, like letting people know where I am and then... I don't know, but then I'm like, Claire, like, you know, you, you can't, like, be like, oh, there's no Wi-Fi. 
um you know like that's pathetic and yeah so i'm like come on like you know that's not i think like if i was with someone it would be fine um the owners are obviously here but um you know they're just out like living their life doing their thing also like we don't speak a common language so like yeah we're not it's not really like a homestay where you spend loads of time with the host um so yeah no like I'm it's fine I've been like listening to podcasts and I've got like books I want to read on my kindle like there's so much I can do I was also like oh I wish I'd brought my laptop so I could do some writing and while that's fair and good like it's fine to do writing obviously but like I'm a writer that's my job and I work all the time <laughs> so I was like no like you know take some time read a book anyway it's all good now I think I'm all right now I think just when I first got here I was like Oh, but what do I do? <laughs> but yeah, I'm, I'm being silly. I am being silly. So let's do the yurt tour. Oh, I'll show you outside first. Let's go outside. Oh, it looks like they're cooking out there. Mm -hmm. That's something a bit smoky. So, oh, it's really nice, isn't it? Beautiful scenes. Should have really ate dinner out here. Yeah, so this is where I am, the surroundings. And there's just a few, yeah, that's, that's basically it. <laughs> Mongolia is the, the most sparsely populated country in the world, so you can really see it, can't you? <laughs> there's a dog over there. Okay, and this is my yurt. Um, Oh, I thought that was a person then. It's not, it's a bag. Whew. So, uh, this was my little cooking station. And, I mean, I've got the choice of three beds. I haven't tested all the mattresses out yet, actually. So I will test them out and see which one I want to sleep on. Um, and then I have sort of my stuff. There is a little table here. And this, I think, is for cooking. I'm guessing it's for cooking, but I didn't cook on it. But... This is in the middle of the year and then it opens out here um, and little uh, there's some uh, solar pieces solar panel the lights so there is that down there and little sink it does have running water very slow running water but it's running water and I think that's about it for the yurt yeah pretty much it's made out of um, well it's got this like plastic floor and then it's made out of, there's beams here, this material, and then beams going up here. So I think these fully dismantle. So most Mongolians used to be, and some still are, nomadic. So they would move around a lot, a little bit like me, but they would take the homes with them. So I think, like, the yurts definitely used to be able to be completely disassembled and taken with them. I think this one probably can as well. So that's pretty cool. And back outside, me and my yurt. <laughs> And the toilet is over there, which is a very long way for my many midnight toilet missions, but that's all right. So just tell you how I got here. So I did the tour today, which went round some of the attractions like close to Ulaanbaatar, but not actually in the city. So I did that. And then my guide um, basically just pulled into this tourist area and he said, oh, your other driver will meet you here. I was like, oh, who's my other driver? Anyway, the other driver was the owner of this homestay. So he picked me up and took me in his four by four to the area with the yurts. And they live in the other yurt along there. So that was good. Gonna, don't know what my hair's doing here. It's very nice. Gonna listen to a couple more podcasts now, I think, and read a little bit. And just, yeah, I'm just enjoying a bit of a digital detox. I'll probably check in just before bed. Peace out. Oh, this is the bathroom, by the way. <laughs> I'm just walking to the loo. <laughs> nice little meaningful uh, shots, though. It's very nice. I'm cold. Okay, two things. It's actually quite cold now. Like it's a lot colder than it was in Ulaanbaatar. Or maybe it was because I didn't really 
go out. No, I went out this time in Inverter. I don't know, but it's really cold and I haven't really got enough clothes, but I've got blankets, so I should be okay. And also I've lost my yurt. I mean, I haven't lost my yurt, but I can't remember which is my yurt. So I think it's this one, but it could also be this one, but I'm, no, it's definitely this one because yeah, I'd remember it didn't have the little like bit of plastic sticking out that this one does. Let's hope it's my yurt. <laughs> Is this my yurt? Yes, it is. Home sweet home. Hello. I'm all snugged up in my sleeping bag. This, uh, I think it's like quite a high tech, high tech sleeping bag, is that a thing? Or like, yeah, just like a good sleeping bag for the cold Mongolian winters. So I think I'll be warm enough. And yeah, I'm just going to kind of readjust myself to make sure I'm completely comfortable and then I'm going to turn the light out and go to sleep so I will report back in the morning good night morning oh my goodness I don't look fit to be on camera yet anyway I slept okay this is my hair mask I should probably take it off I slept okay um not the best sleep of my life but okay and yeah i'm just gonna get up now see what it looks like outside the yurt in the morning morning neighbors how's it hanging everyone had a good sleep yeah Okay, so it looks like I'm going back to Inverter in a minute. The woman came over and she was like, you're in better? I was like, oh, I'm not ready. So I'm just going to get ready now and then hopefully, I, well, then I am going to win better. So I think I might be getting a lift the whole way back to win better, which is nice. Um, just at another stop now and got all my stuff back with me in the car, so that's good. <laughs> Got towed across a lake in a two wheel drive. Okay, I seriously had the weirdest trip back ever. So, <laughs> I don't even really know how to explain this. Oh, this is such a long story. Basically, I got in the car with the family, we drove for a bit. And then we were towed across a lake and then two people got out, went to get the bus and then the mum and the dad of the family got back in. And I thought I was getting the bus as well, but apparently I wasn't. Apparently I was being taken back to Ulaanbaatar. And then we just drove around for hours and hours and hours, just driving literally everywhere. Literally just like kept stopping around places, stop for lunch, stop for this, stop for that. And I was like, oh my goodness. Anyway, eventually... That's like cutting the story short quite a lot, but I just don't even know how to describe this story. So I'm going to cut it short there. Um, I got back to Ulaanbaatar um, and I'm fine. <laughs> and it was fine. It wasn't like unsafe or anything. It was just bizarre. Like I just literally spent the whole morning driving around the Mongolian countryside. Maybe I'll go further into that story one day, but yeah, I'm going to conclude this video now because I'm just baffled. <laughs> um, yeah, see ya. Hope you've enjoyed it. <laughs> See you next time. Bye.